and here we go. Thanks for joining us today, everyone. We're um, I'd like to like to thank you for a welcome. For, excuse me, I'm going to start over. Welcome to today's CNCF live webinar, Managing Validating Admission Policies Through Gatekeeper. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm Libby Schultz, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. I'm going to read our code of conduct and hand over to J.D. Gabani, software engineer at Microsoft. A few housekeeping items before we get started. During the webinar, you are not able to speak as an attendee, but you can pop any questions or comments into the chat box, and we will get to those. I believe we have two checkpoints that JDIP will get to, so um, be sure to leave your questions there. Uh, this is an official webinar of the CNCF and as such is subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that code of conduct, and please be respectful of all of your fellow participants and presenters. Please note that the recording and slides will be posted later today to the CNCF online programs page at community.cncf.io under online programs. They're also available via your registration link and the recording will be available on our online programs YouTube playlist later today as well. With that, I'm gonna hand things over to JDIP to kick off today's presentation. Well, thanks Libby. Um, so yeah. I am, hello everyone, I'm JD, I'm from Microsoft, and uh, I work on OPA Gatekeeper, which uh, which is an admission webhook for policy enforcement and governance and much more. So today we are gonna learn about how to manage and use validating admission policies through Gatekeeper. So first, we are going to get refreshed on what exactly OPA Gatekeeper is, uh, what capabilities do Gatekeeper have, and uh, what features does it provide? Then we'll see how Gatekeeper is different than validating admission policy and what values can Gatekeeper provide alongside validating admission policies. We'll learn how to enable Gatekeeper to manage validating admission policy, and then we'll go through how to create policy templates and constraints in Gatekeeper that uses a VAP underneath. And finally, we'll go through the demo and see how everything comes together. So Gatekeeper is a policy enforcement tool that helps control what end users can do. It can help in making sure that cluster remains compliant with company policies. Gatekeeper provides a way for policy authors to write policy as code and then allow creating constraint around policy code to enforce the policy implementation. On top of this, Gatekeeper supports multiple policy languages so that template authors can write in the policy language they prefer, either rego or common expression language, depending on the nature of the policies. Now let's look at the feature that Gatekeeper has that enables all these capabilities. So Gatekeeper is a validating admission webhook that validates the resources for the policies created on the cluster. It is also a mutating webhook, which is capable of mutating resources. Uh, apart from webhook, Gatekeeper has an audit process that runs at a periodic time and audits the own cluster resources against the policies and reports violating resources so that admins or resource owners could take actions and make the resource comply. Gatekeeper can access on cluster resources and validate admission requests against, resource, against the resources deployed in the cluster. For example, you can write a policy that makes sure that every ingress host URL is unique. In this case, Gatekeeper will check every existing or appropriate existing ingress uh, on the cluster and then compare host URL to the incoming resource to make sure incoming resource has a unique host URL. Furthermore, Gatekeeper has the ability to talk to external data source to validate the resources as well. For example, you can utilize cosine Gatekeeper provider to verify images. And Gatekeeper also has shift left uh, validation through Gator CLI and we already have a policy library that includes common frequently used policies to get started with. So now let's look at the differences between validating admission policies and gatekeeper. So validating admission policy is an in-process alternative to uh, entry uh, process as an alternative to validating admission by book. Since it is entry, it has better reliability, better availability, and it is able to fail close without impacting availability. Being entry means that validating admission policy provides better admission request latency as well. 
and it uses common expression cell languages to declare validations and rules for policies. Now, as we talked about, Gator has audit, shift left through Gator CLI, Gator's, uh, Gatekeeper supports mutation referential policies, policies that can talk to outside of the data, uh, outside of the cluster, uh, for Gatekeeper to, uh, to talk to other data sources for validation. And it also supports multiple policy languages. You can choose to write complex policies in Rego and simple policies in Cell. Furthermore, Gatekeeper has uh, ability to verify workload resources against policies created for the port and can act as a an, uh, backup webhook in case of VAP fails open. So by using Gatekeeper and VAP together, users can get best of both. Users can get auditing results through constraint status or with publish and subscribe model over a streaming channel. Via audits, user can get actionable information on violating resources to take actions with the same cell, VAP style cell code that was written uh, through Gatekeeper. Uh, Gatekeeper also provides shift left with Gator CLI to validate resources to make sure resources are in compliant before deploying them to the cluster, the same code. Additionally, Gator CLI also supports uh, validating workload resources for port policies uh, written in common expression language. So, and Gatekeeper as a webhook also has the same ability to expand this uh, workload resources into mock port and then test that mock port against uh, board policies created for the cluster. So by using Gatekeeper and validating admission policies together, uh, users can get faster response time with uh, validating admission policies uh, with say, common expression language uh, since it is in tree. And users can use Rego through OPA Gatekeeper for complex policies that require own cluster resources or external data source to validate requests. And users, of course, can utilize all the different features that we just talked about via Gatekeeper. Uh, any questions so far? Sounds like none. I'll move forward. Uh, yeah. So now let's see how to enable uh, VAP management and cell engine uh, in, in, in Gatekeeper. So uh, validating admission policy was introduced in 1.26 and now is stable in 1.30. But if a cluster does not have validating admission policy API enabled, user can still write VAP style common expression language policies and enforce them through Gatekeeper. Now to enable this support, uh, we need to turn on experimental enable KTS native validation flag in the Gatekeeper and this flag is going beta in 370. To enable the generation of validating admission policy and validation, validating admission policy binding for templates and constraint, uh, we need to turn on the flags uh, called create uh, default create VAP for templates and default create uh, uh, VAP for constraints. What this will do is it will tell Gatekeeper to look at templates with uh, cell source and then create VAP, VAP resource for that template. And then whenever a constraint is created, uh, it will Gatekeeper will look at the parent template and uh, figure out if the template has a cell source and then create binding resource for that constraint. And on the right is, a, is an uh, example of a command uh, that can upgrade Gatekeeper to turn on these features. So with this fee, uh, this configurations and flag turned on, Gatekeeper can now act as a front end for different kinds of policies, like cell policies and rego policies template, allowing users to write policies in different language uh, that they prefer. And also managing becomes easier as through Gatekeeper, both common expression language and rego templates can be created. And for templates containing cell source, Gator will, Gatekeeper will generate respective validating admission policy and binding resources and manage during the updates and deletes as well. So now user doesn't have to worry about dealing with different methods of creating different types of policies and user can just use constraint framework and Gatekeeper itself to write and uh, manage both the types of policies. Policies that do not require on cluster resources or external data source to validate requests 
are ideal to write in common expression language and can be used through validating admission policies. So here is an example uh, template there with cell engine and VAP style cell code. So the CRD.spec defines schema for input parameters and these input parameters are then uh, up defined through constraint. And under the target, cell source is defined. So constraint framework uh, with gatekeeper takes this cell code and then creates a validating binding, a validating admission policy resource so that the does this cell code can be enforced through VAP. So this is an overall uh, gatekeeper to VAP flow. So gatekeeper supports multiple engines like Rego and Kertes Care native validation, supports template with different policy languages like Rego and cell code. So for the template containing cell code, if the generation is turned on, then gatekeeper creates validating admission policy and binding for templates and constraints belonging to uh, uh, constant template combination uh, with cell uh, code written in it. So when the request comes in, API server uses entry validation process and looks at VAP and VAPB for validation. In the case where there are no VA, uh, 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 validating admission policies or validating admission policy binding, entry process or entry process fails open, the request is passed to gatekeeper for validation where gatekeeper and for, can enforce a common expression language or rego policies to determine if the request should be deemed valid or not. I'll again pose for the question. So before going to the demo, uh, I am going to define a hypothetical use case where a bank called Agile Bank is looking to enforce a policy that requires resources to have valid owner label. Since this is a simple requirement, we can use common expression language based validating admission policy to fulfill that requirement. So let's see how we can enforce this using gatekeeper and VAP together. I'm going to stop sharing to uh, go into the demo. Uh, my screen visible? Yep, we can see it. Okay, cool. So to start with, uh, I have a setup already with uh, cell support enabled in Gatekeeper, and I'm going to try to create the same template that we saw earlier with uh, common expression language code and see if that gets enforced. So this template basically tells Gatekeeper to mandate a particular label on resources and to what label uh, which label should be on which resource can be mandated or mentioned through constraint so this constraint says that uh, any pod in agile bank namespace must have a label owner with an allowed regex that should match the value of that label so i'm going to try to create a pod without that label now and as we can see, the pod is now rejected by gatekeeper through the policy that was written in validating admission policy style common uh, expression language. So now I'm going to attempt to upgrade the gatekeeper. And before doing that, I want to make sure that validating admission policy API is enabled. Since it is enabled, I'm going to run the same command that we saw earlier to upgrade and enable the generation behavior on. So once we, up, we upgrade the gatekeeper to turn on the generation, since we already have the template and constraint available in the cluster with cell source, gatekeeper will generate binding and admission validating admission policy resources uh, after the upgrade. So let's wait a minute to get finished with the upgrade. Okay, since the upgrade is complete now, uh, I'm going to check for validating admission policy if, if the resources are generated or not. Okay, great. They are generated. So I'm now creating the same uh, 
port that we tried earlier and it is rejected right so now i as a resource owner what if i wanted to do the same thing before applying this resource right so that's that's where i can utilize the gator cli that gatekeeper has uh, to make sure that i can i can catch bad resources or invalid resources early on without even trying to create it to the cluster and wait for the rejection from the cluster itself so i'm going to use gator test command to use the same template same constraint and the same file to see if my resource is valid or not and i can i can get those rejection early on right now i can see that this uh, podyaml that i'm trying to apply is go not going to work because it has a it has a it doesn't have, it doesn't have a required label or it is a missing label right so this was a use case where uh, I, as a resource owner, wanted to check my pod early on, uh, my resources early on, right? But what, what if there are already resources on the cluster available? How do admins of a namespace or, or admin of a clusters get to know about them? So for that, I can turn to audit process of gatekeeper and look at the constraint that, that exists in the clusters to see if audit has reported any violations there. So as I can see on the constraint itself that there are in total five violations exist for this constraint. So I can look at constraint status to find out more about this violation. And there I can get the appropriate information to take actions, right? Like I can get pod names, I can get namespace in which this pod belongs to and uh, uh, the uh, rejection or invalid message saying that why this pod is in, is is not in compliance state but so this is this is where we saw that pod is getting caught by the policies that were created for the pod but many times it it happens that workload resources are the ones that create the pod so now i'm trying to attempt to create a deployment that uh, creates a pod without this owner label and let's see what happens so the deployment gets accepted, right? So now I'm going to see if there is a pod for that deployment. Seems like there are no new pods in, in the namespace itself. So I need to de do a little bit of debugging and see at the deployment uh, itself where I can find out that validating admission policy rejected the, the pod. But it sure would have been nice to get the deployment itself rejected because we know that the policy wouldn't allow the pods without owner label to come up. For that, I can use expansion template feature uh, for from the gatekeeper. So what this uh, basically expansion template feature does is it tells gatekeeper to, to create mock pods for deployment and replica set, and then create and uh, then test that mock pods against the policies for the pods. So after applying that, uh, I'm trying to create the same deployment again, and I can see that it is now getting rejected by uh, the gatekeepers validating admission web. But me as a resource owner, what if I wanted to do the same thing in a shift left manner and catch this uh, or, or know about this invalid deployments early on? For that, I can use getter expand command. It might come. Uh, my computer froze. Am, am I visible? Hello? Uh, no, well, I see your screen, but there's the cone oh. on it. Is that right? Oh, wait, let me, yeah, sorry about that. Let me, let <laughs> there me we go. zoom the demo. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so what if I wanted to do this in the shift left manner, right? Uh, and for that, I can use Gator Expand. Uh, so what Gator Expand does is it takes expansion template that we just saw earlier. It takes the deployment file that we were trying to create and then creates and outputs a mock pod that would have been created by this deployment file. And then that, that mock pod can be piped into Gator Test with the same templates and constraint that we, we were testing with. 
to figure out if this port will or will not violate the uh, the policies that we we have on the cluster, right? And as we can see, we can we can catch the deployment early on with Gator X1 as well. Um, so yeah, that was it for the demos today. I'm going to share the deck again and see if there are any questions. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, my computer just froze and, and it, it had blank screen, so I couldn't couldn't see yeah, what was going on. And I'm gonna share some information to reach out in case if anyone has questions later on in the chat. Great, thank you. All right, are you ready for some questions now? Okay, Any, don't be shy everyone, pop them in the chat if you have a question. Let's see what we get. From Bridget, what are good ways for community members to get involved and participate? um so we have we have this library right and we have a rego pol a lot many rego policies than common expression language policies right now and we are working through the migration and adding adding common expression language policies for those uh, equivalent to rego policies folks if interested can look at any policies they want to work on and then add those language uh, add cell code to the template itself that would be one way to uh contribute to the community and get started with excellent anyone else this is great we have the links to the demo the links to how to get in touch with them on slack what else have i'll we drop i'll drop the library link as well just in case if folks are interested. Perfect. Does anyone else have any other questions? Oh, you mentioned shift left. Can you give another, can you give other examples of how Gatekeeper helps with security and compliance efforts? Um, what do you mean by that? Uh, like what, what kind of examples? Uh, let's see, Bridget, any specific requests? No, one sec, she may be typing. In the earlier stages of deployment. Yeah, so we have uh, Gator CLI that can be yeah yeah so getter so getter cli has three essential functions right we saw test and we saw uh expand earlier uh in in cncf webinar a few months back we covered uh, another functionality called getter verify where you can just define a whole suite with like multiple templates and multiple constraints and with multiple uh resources that that might go into the cluster and that's how you generally create cluster, yeah, you, you apply bulk manifests and stuff like that. So for that, you can use getter verify and make sure that uh, whatever you are applying in bulk are, is also compliant with, uh, with the policies, like multiple policies and multiple constraints created on the cluster. So getter, getter verify would be a good fit for, for that kind of use case. Yeah, thanks awesome. for asking this question. Okay, we still have time for more if anyone has any other questions. Can I use VAP feature and gatekeeper in older K8s versions? Uh, 
So the support is, I think, till 120. As long as the VAP uh, API is enabled, yes. Uh, if if VAP enable if VAP API is not enabled, then of course, uh, cell policies written in web VAP style expression still can be enforced through Gatekeeper, uh, as Gatekeeper itself supports the uh, cell engine in itself. And, and and can interpret common expression language as well. Awesome. If I don't need to generate VAP, I can use all the older Kubernetes versions, right? Yes, yes. Great. Great questions, y'all. Keep them coming. While you have him here. <laughs> Anyone else? Don't be shy, y'all. Where is the best place to ask questions about VAP? Uh, it may be Kubernetes uh, Slack channel or or Gatekeeper Slack channel if it's related to Gatekeeper. Great. Okay, don't stop now. Who else? <laughs> if I have policies in Rego today, what's the best way to migrate to CEL policies? So uh, Gatekeeper itself, uh, can uh, supports multiple engine, right? So you can you can write common expression language policies and rego policies in the same template. So I would start with first uh, testing out cell policies in shift left manner, like a writing test and and rego policies in in the same or either different template. I would start with uh, verifying the policy. I wrote in cell and and check the parity with rego by doing the testing on resources and and figure out what should be the what resources should be rejected and what should not in shift left manner and once I'm done with that I can I can try creating that policy on on gatekeeper itself and and then on on cluster itself and then try to see if it works or not with like dry run or warn action first Because those those uh, actions don't really reject the resource itself, but rather allows it to be created. And then, if in case the cell code still having it does still have bugs, then uh, it won't be rejecting faulty. It it won't be doing like false positive. I should have both Rego and VAP engines first in my constraint template first, right? Yes. Yes. Great questions. <laughs> Rego, yeah, Opa, okay. Opa. Yeah, Opa. Uh, so we have two engines. Uh, one supports uh, Rego and Opa, and then uh, the KTS native validation supports cell language uh, to in, in constraint itself. So using Gatekeeper to generate VAP means that all the policies that you are applying to the cluster is at a central location, right? Like Gatekeeper does the creating VAP and binding resource for you. So you don't need to learn multiple uh, terminologies and, and multiple schemas for, for same work, right? Like you can already use constraint framework uh, through Gatekeeper and people are aware about these constraints and temp uh, templates and constraint combinations to enforce policies. We can do the same thing, but use validating admission policies instead, uh, which of course has its like own advantages such as availability, reliability, ability to fail close up, uh, uh, lesser re uh, request, uh, request uh, turnaround time and et cetera. All right. 
Anyone else? Y'all have had some great questions. Is there anything else you want to add, JD? Mm. Yes, feel free to drop by and say hi on a, on Slack channels, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Okay, I'm gonna give everybody just another couple seconds in case there's a question being typed, but up oh, there we go. Yes, gatekeeper does work as a full 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 back webhook. So in case like uh, VAP, if even if there is a bug in in cell code and by if by mistake if VAP deems that this uh, should not get blocked and and like if there is no VAP or it fails open then it it gets passed to to gatekeeper. Uh, so yeah, earlier there was a bug in Kubernetes one twenty eight uh, and one twenty nine where. Uh, it just didn't reconcile binding objects uh, whenever the subsequent uh, param ref object would get created. So in that case, uh, it wasn't verifying the the resource or admission request, even though it should have rejected it. In those cases, uh, that request gets passed to gatekeeper itself and make gatekeeper make sure that uh, these requests are verified and validated. Uh, yeah, great question, Rita. Excellent. All right, unless we have any other questions, we can wrap up. Let me give it one more second and see. There have been a lot of good ones. Okay, lots of thanks. Yes, thank you so much, Jada, for a great presentation. And for all of you for asking some great questions. This was awesome interaction. Interaction. Um, that's all we have for today. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to follow these links and keep up um, with Gatekeeper. And we're looking forward to seeing you at a future CNCF webinar. These this recording will be online later today. Jadip, if you want to send me the final deck, I can add those too. Yeah. And everyone have a great day. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Bye -bye.